we want to talk about metrics. We want to talk about numbers. And the first thing we want to talk about is the idea of aggregation, okay? It's basic, but it's very fundamental to what we do in Data Studio. In data modeling, we work with fields to change their value or create new fields, right? The first way of doing it is aggregation. We can do, we can perform different kinds of data modeling as well. Calculated fields, data blending parameters, we talk about them, but yeah, the first one, the most basic and fundamental way of modeling, especially numbers, is aggregation, right? We can somehow aggregate the measures as well. We'll see that. So let's start with this. And I want you to help me with this. The definition of aggregation is the process of reducing and summarizing data. I have a table of different dates and the number of sales for this business. Someone from this business, the CEO or the CFO, asked me what was sales during this time period? What was sales? No other description. What should I reply? Should I say 5, 8, 18, 3, 11? Should I just take a screenshot of the table and send them to them? Any ideas? The question is, what was sales? Summarize it. Wouldn't you just add up sales? Add up sales. Yeah. One way of reducing this table to a single number that I can report is summarizing. 45. Right. Adding up all these five numbers together and telling them your total number of sales were 45 during this time period. But there are other ways of reducing these numbers as well. What is another example? Giving an average. Average, yeah. Again, reducing five numbers to a single one. Average formatings. There are other ways. The count of the maximum. Minimum and maximum, right? Median, standard deviation, variance. And in data studio, we have none and auto as types of aggregation as well, which we will see. But different aggregation methods over a series of data points, metrics, result in different numbers. The average is nine, the count is five. We have five different values here. The maximum is 18, and the minimum is three. Sometimes we're asked, what was the minimum number of sales last month? What was the average of daily sales last month? In that case, we should reply nine. What was the number of days in which we had sailed last month? We had to reply with five. So different aggregations on numbers. And in Data Studio, we have tools to apply different aggregations to numbers as well. So let's dive in to Data Studio and see how aggregation works. Aggregation. Okay, so should I be in the view mode or edit mode? Yeah, we'll jump in between the two different modes. So I have it tabled here. Let's first familiarize ourselves with the data set that we're gonna work on in today's session. I have a table for a hypothetical business, right? And the products that they had and the sales that they made. It's a Google sheet and they have dates, right? Which dates, what product, how many users did we have on the landing page of this product? How much sales did we make? What was the cost of goods sold for an ebook? It's zero for a workshop. Maybe we have people helping us with the workshop. We have cost for course. Yeah, it was a recorded course, so the cost is zero. And what was the ad spend for getting those sales? So this is our simple data set for this session. Okay. Now, I've already created a data source from this data set in Data Studio using what? A data connector. So if I click in here, on this chart, see what data source it's connected to and click on the pencil icon, I can edit and say, yes, these are the dimensions, right? And sometimes data studio shows numbers of dimensions as well, but whenever they're aggregated, they are actually metrics. And if I edit the connection, I can see where it is connected. But let's go to fields and zone and start with this. I have sales per product per day. This one, this is score called is the sum aggregation, right? We can see on the scorecard, this is the metric. This is the aggregation method. It says sum. I can click on it and change the aggregation method. 
I've already done so and created an average. So this is the sum of all sales. This is the average of all these 12 numbers. This is the median, the center point of these, all these 12, 12 numbers. This is the minimum, 142. This is the maximum, 3,580. 3, okay. Now, these are simple types of aggregation that I could do on the metric of sales. And if I click on them, you can see that I basically simply changed the method of aggregation for these. But what about products? Product is a dimension. I'm aggregating product, right? And, and this is school call. And the way I did that, I basically dragged and dropped product, which is ABC. So the type is text. It's the dimension. I dragged it and dropped it on the metric place of a scorecard, and I get the number three. And I renamed this to show that it's actually counting the distinct number of values within this dimension. So I have course, I have workshop, the second distinct value, and ebook. But if I want to apply the same dimension to a scorecard, when instead of count distinct, I choose count, it counts the actual number of values regardless of any duplication. So this is meaningless, but this one would be meaningful. How many products did we have for sale? Did we offer for sale in that time period? How many unique? Maybe you want to see how many unique landing pages you have. How many unique, uh, I don't know, products or product categories did you sell from in the time frame that you're interested? So a dimension can be converted to a metric with the aggregation of count or count distinct. We can also count the number of dates. So the count of dates, the count distinct, sorry, of date is four because we are reporting on four different distinct dates, February, March, January, and they will loop each one of them. They appear three times, right? So we have four different days, three products, and these are the aggregate values. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. Next one, per category. Now, this is nice. This is interesting. Up to this point, it's intuitive. We know we have some numbers, we are aggregating them together, but per category. What I did in this page, I basically removed the dates from this table. So I can do it right now. So you can see how it's done. I basically, if I copy this table, paste this table, show how it's done, remove the dates, then Data Studio tries to aggregate the amount of sales per categories of the only dimension applied, right? 10,000, 3,000, 655. And this is what we see in the next page, 10,000, 3,800, 650. So this is the sum of sales for all the rows sharing the same category that is applied to that table. Some of these values for ebook, right? Some of these values for workshop and some of these values for course. But look at this. When I apply sum for any single categorical kind of aggregation on this table, the grand total follows the field's aggregation list. So now it's the sum of these three numbers. Each of these numbers are some of the individual numbers for that value, for that category, right? But then the grand total is some of these three. But if I set it to minimum, I can do the same. So these are basically sales. I applied the metric of sale to this table four times. I just dragged it, dropped it four times. I can do it again, right? I can place it here and I it automatically sums it up and it hasn't been renamed yet, but I just renamed the other ones. So the second one, I just click and put it on minimum. And you can see that the grand total is following the per category aggregation method that I said. So this one, 142, is the minimum amount of sales for ebook. And we have three different minimums for each category. And then the grand total follows that and shows the minimum of the three categories. Same with maximum, same with average. So it's the average of these four values, the average of these four values, the average of these four values, and this is the average of these three values, right? So grand total follows the aggregation method. This is something important 
that we need to keep in mind when reporting on different data sets. Any questions on this one? This may be the simplest question of the day, but unless you, when you choose like max, min, whatever, average, it, it's entirely on you to rename the metric yeah. and describe it in the- Exactly. Oh, there's no automated way to tell GDS to say, just stick yeah. the word, you know, stick average against the name. Unfortunately not. It's a really good point. It was a simple, but very important point. This can really kill you if you get it wrong. If you forget to rename, you're obviously- Exactly. And forget to communicate. So when we change the aggregation from what the default is and what the viewer expects, then it's our responsibility to communicate that to the client. Yeah. It's simple, but it's easy to forget as well. So if you put it on average, you forgot to label it, and then someone will call you, email you, that what is this number? It doesn't look right. And it would be a waste of everyone's time. Very good point, John.